Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to all of those who are here with us. I would like to start by thanking the organizing committee of FIS, especially Josie Villa, for the invitation to be the moderator of this panel. I would also like to thank our panelists who are going to share their experiences and inputs. They've all been introduced to some extent, but let me very briefly say who's who. We have Jose Gomez Temporal, who is a public health physician. He was Ministry of Health between 2007, 2011, a researcher of the Public Health School of Fiocruz, and he is Executive Director of the Sul American Institute of Government and Health. Dr. Jose Gomez Temporal will go first. Unfortunately, he cannot stay till the very end. He has another uh, appointment at uh, 3 15, so he won't be able to be with us till the very end. We also have Dr. Marta Diaz, who has taken different leadership position through her career. She was the president of the Andean cluster. And she also worked with Sundogs, GE Healthcare, and Boston Consulting Group in Spain. She is currently president of Pfizer in Brazil. We also have Marco Krieger. He is trained in biology science in Paraná. His master and PhD in the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. And he is the vice president of production and innovation in health for Fiocruz. We also have Felipe Barreiro. He is an engineer trained at Unicamp. He has his MBA in the Foundations Getulio Vargas, specialized in strategy from the University of Miami School of Business Administrator. And he is the VP of Medtronic Brazil. And finally, myself, I'm Angela Ula. I studied chemical engineering and my master in UFRJ and my PhD in Paris. And I am a, prof a professor of technology and innovation at COPY. Before giving the floor to my speakers, I would like to make some comments. We are talking about the importance of R&D in a new complex of health, a very relevant and current topic. We've been speaking a lot about science, technology, innovation. It is, uh, these are buzzwords, uh, uh, and that has been the case during the pandemic. We've said good things and bad things about that. We have taken thousands of years living in the uh, years of darkness was, uh, during which religion ruled it's very sad to see uh, we going back to the obscure days. So all the values of enlightenment, science and democracy. Science and technology and uh, R&D are indication of uh, civilization and sovereignty and the economic value that R&D brings to us. The pharma industry, its whole basis is R&D. And the pharmaceutical industry is known for its dynamic role in R&D. Global companies invest 15 to 20% of their uh, revenues into R&D. In Brazil, the pharmaceutical industry has had more concentration on the production of generics. And there are some other institutions such as Fiocruz and Butantan, which tend to develop more R&D. And though we have focused on generic, even the uh, API used in generics come from abroad in Brazil. We import 
medication, vaccine, pharmacochemicals, and in 2019, it represented $8 billion in imports. 80% of our APIs are imported from China and India and medical and hospital devices in 2017 amounted to $7 billion. During the pandemic, we had a clear understanding of our shortage. We had a problem of PPE, of tests, of reparators, of uh, alcohol-based uh, sanitizers, well, let alone vaccines, everything was imported. So we lost our autonomy. From an economic perspective, it's worth to invest in a new health complex, which is based on research, development, and innovation. In addition to market size, 15 to 20 billion dollars, a, a really an impressive market. We also have a scientific tradition in the area. Physicians, engineers, bio, biologists are very well trained, but we have to think of a business modeling, so to speak, to have a new health complex in Brazil. There is something unique about the Brazilian system. In Korea, 80% of researchers uh, work in companies in Brazil, 70% of researchers are in research centers or the university. Therefore, I have some questions to ask you. Is it enough to be a manufacturer of API such as India and China? Is it the model we should follow? Would world company be willing to bring their research centers to Brazil? Can Brazilian companies change their behavior and have more R&D in Brazil? These are the questions that really drives us to discussing the importance of R&D in health industrial complex. Said that, let me now hand it over to Minister Gomes Temporon for his comments. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me greet Professor Angela Uller, Felipe Barrero, Marco Dria, and Marta Diaz. I would like to greet all of those who are watching us a very relevant topic, certainly. COVID-19 pandemic has laid bare our technological vulnerability. Brazil was brought to its knee. We had no access to PPE, inputs, respirators. We had some difficulty to access API and start manufacturing vaccines. And Brazil is too big a country to remain in such a fragile position. So I would like to start by just making a diagnosis before coming my proposals. R&D, environment is not appropriate in Brazil. There are some critical barriers to production of knowledge and innovation. We've seen a scape of brains because the government attacks Brazilian science and makes it very weak. I never thought I would live to see what I've been witnessing. We know that developing and detaining technological information is absolutely essential for any country that wants to reach full sustainable development. We have observed a lack of strategic understanding and public policies. And as such, we haven't reached the second level of development that we should have. We need a continuous efficient policy that favors research and development. 
Some data of the survey of innovation by IBG shows that they are from 2015 to 2017, and there has been a decrease in investments of research and development in the public and private sector. Public expenditures are 0.63% of GDP, private expenditures are 0.64% from private institutions. We see that some efforts are just focused on getting uh, fiscal incentives and exemptions to buy imported devices. And very little is invested in really coming up with innovation. If we really visit what we have uh, for, for example, submission of patents since January last year, we can see that in 2019, 25,000 patents uh, were submitted. Only 20% were patent submissions of people living in Brazil. 40% from research institutes, 20% of small and mid-sized, and 10% of micro companies. In other words, 80% of those submissions were made by non-residents of Brazil. 30% of them of companies or researchers from the US. Brazil has scale and demand. We have a industrial structure, the best one in Latin America excellent research institutes and university. The technical quality of our researchers is widely known. We can run clinical trials. We have a internationally respected regulatory agency. We have a universal healthcare system. India and China do not have that. Generics produced by India are not consumed by half of the Indian population. We have universal system, we, we have access, we have important uh, financial supporting agencies, a number of them currently under the attack of the government. And we have the experience implemented in my, uh, when I was in office, of reducing Brazilian vulnerability in the economic industrial uh, complex, thanks to partnerships which were continued until 2016, unfortunately. The policy was interrupted, and uh, today is a threat. A policy which is coordinated by the Ministry of Health using the power of government. I know Marco Krieger is going to talk about the experience of AstraZeneca vaccine, which is a wonderful uh, initiative that really shows the importance of having this understanding. We've created the executive group of uh, the health industry which, uh, complex, which unfor unfortunately was dissolved by the government. We defined a group of technology, analyzing strategy and the reality, and we have forged partnership between public uh, companies from Brazil and for, from abroad. We created 80 partnerships in this field, but in 2016, everything was put to a halt. So Brazil has all the conditions to stop being a passive absorber of technology and really become one of the uh, front runners uh, of uh, technology and innovation. But to do that, we need to uh, be more than producers. We have to be among the top group of countries developing knowledge and we have all the necessary conditions. What we don't have is a, a long-term policy, something for 20, 30 years that can really takes us from the very bad situation we currently find ourselves in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. And you stick to your time, great. Let me now hand it over to Marta Diaz. Thank you, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the invitation to be part of this relevant discussion about research and development and what's essential to improve 
the health of the Brazilian population. Now, speaking of the last months, our lives have changed so much. COVID-19 pandemic has brought a number of challenges to professional companies, researchers, especially in healthcare. And I would like to acknowledge the work of healthcare professionals. Since the beginning of COVID-19, it has become even more evident the importance of having companies such as Pfizer bring in health innovation to support society at large. At Pfizer, since March 20, we have dedicated all our efforts to bring therapeutic responses that could help us fight the pandemic. As a result of our best efforts in a record time, in partnership with Biotech, we've managed to develop, test, and approve a vaccine of high quality, safe, and accessible that could help us fight COVID-19. This is part of the innovation DNA of Pfizer the development of molecules that really transform the way we treat disease is the purpose of our history of nearly 70 years in Brazil alone. Making impossible become possible is very hard, but for Pfizer, this is our mission, our daily mission and our purpose as a company. We have an unprecedented situation with a very promising pipeline with 100 potential innovations that can change the lives of millions of people, in addition to COVID vaccine. Pfizer got very well known as a result of our vaccine, but we have a long history of innovation and we have changed the, the way that many diseases have been treated. Pfizer has uh, brought advances in different areas, oncology, internal medicine, rare disease, inflammation, immunology, and hospital area. We have over 150 medications uh, licensed in Brazil. We touch many lives. Today in the world, one in every seven people you has already used a vaccine or a medication by Pfizer. If we consider COVID-19 vaccination, about 100 uh, million uh, people will be impacted by us, almost half of the Brazilian population. We have a very robust structure in Brazil. We have a manufacturing plant in the state of Sao Paulo focused on manufacturing solid drugs. This year, we announced a partnership with Eurofarm, a Brazilian pharmaceutical company, to produce locally COVID-19 vaccine. It's also located in Itapevi and extending uh, then the supply to four continents, including also Africa and South America. It included uh, knowledge transfer and uh, we've already started our operation. We are expecting for it to start in 2022. And as a result of our operational capacity, we can produce more than 100 million doses of vaccine. And they are distributed exclusively, exclusively to Latin America. We also invest in research and development in Brazil, and which became even more evident during the pandemic because we participated in significant global trials, including uh, the uh, trial for the vaccine and also the development uh, of an antiviral for COVID-19. We have many studies going on in the country. Now, as important as developing molecules that can change the course of disease, you also need to work for these innovations to effectively get to new people. And for this reason, we want to lead the dialogue and contribute for the improvement of the healthcare system so that there is better access uh, to healthcare. One of the major accomplishments of the population is uh, and the possibility of having access to vaccines and uh, medications through SUS and also through health plans. Access and sustainability depend directly on the assessment of these technologies. So we need to think that this model is a model that provides opportunity for improvement 
thank you very much. I thank you very much for the opportunity. Now, Dr. Marcus Krieger. Well, first of all, I would like to thank the invitation to me. It's an honor to be here sitting on this panel with our renowned colleagues and uh, the former minister Temporo, who has always been ex uh, exemplary as a minister, but also as a researcher at Osvaldo Cruz Foundation. I think that we are going through a very important moment with the opportunity of now discussing a learning that needs to be deepened with regards to the development of Brazil and the use of scientific knowledge for the benefit of society. I think that Fio Cruz started and has in its DNA, DNA 121 years and to deal with other pandemics that existed in the past, such as yellow fever and, and others. And now our colleagues uh, of 110 years ago could solve those problems. Not only that, but also start a virtuous activity of scientific research in public health, such as the discovery of Dr. Carlos Chagas, which took place in the first decade of last century, which was not the beginning of scientific activity in Brazil, but undoubtedly was the time when Brazilian society saw the benefit of using scientific knowledge to solve its problem. And this is very strong in our activities since then. We uh, went through many other situations, just to mention. Over the last few years, we had, and Dr. Temporon will remember, we had H1N1 outbreak while he was a minister, which was a challenge for our healthcare system and other emergencies such as Zika virus, re-emerging such as yellow fever and measles, and the new sanitary challenge that we have had with SARS-CoV-2. I think that our generation has had to deal with the biggest public health challenge of the last 100 years, at least. And our challenge has come to a moment uh, that maybe we're not so well prepared as humanity to deal with this um, challenge. I think that we have had very significant accomplishments, such as, for example, AIDS virus took three years to be identified. It took three years before they identified the virus as the cause uh, of the uh, of AIDS, the first outbreak of coronavirus earlier this uh, century took almost one month to identify SARS-CoV-2. We, in one day, we already had the genome and in one month we were trying to design the first vaccines. And in much less time than it was necessary to identify uh, the virus that caused AIDS, we already had many candidate vaccines already in uh, the clinical phase. And this is important to show that the scientific knowledge is available. And I think that the Brazilian society and the global society as a whole has been using society in the, as the best way to deal with the pandemic. Of course, we see anti-science movements, but in Brazil, at least, at least with regards to vaccines, it's much less significant than it is in other countries. Here we have a compliance uh, of more than 90% of the population. I would like to say, first of all, is that these movements didn't happen in the middle of nothing. The new vaccines that we are using now, they were being developed already uh, to face sanitary challenges. There were significant challenges for the funding and preparation for a new pandemic or an X disease, which we didn't know what it would be, but we were kind of expecting it. And also we were funding uh, the technologies such as uh, Moderna's technology were also being developed for this type of initiative. And immunotherapy had transcended uh, the field of infectocontagious diseases and was being widely used in cancer 
in autoimmune diseases, such as the case of the history of the vaccine of Pfizer BioNTech, and you had a pipeline that was much more significant for cancer and new diseases rather than infect or contagious diseases. But that knowledge for this new technology basis for immunotherapy made it possible for them to provide a very prompt response. It's very important for us to assess that right now in Brazil, we have a funding crisis of the funding system for our system of technology and innovation, and this is may be related to other challenges. And I would like, I would take the freedom to draw your attention to the results we have attained, the long history of the country with investments in different areas of research in Brazil. Uh, the investment made at Enbrapa has transformed the country, maybe the most significant country in terms of production of food in the world. The investments made on ITA, IPA, in enge space engineering school made it possible for, for us to have Embraer, maybe one of the leading companies in this industry in the world. And I'm sure that the, the investments made in health and public health, the investments made uh, um, after uh, the um, policy of the Ministry of Health, and we have the honor of having Minister Temporão, that was related to the foundation. I'll share a brief story with you. It started as a program in the post-graduation of the City School of Public Health, and we started discussing the transformation of uh, health uh, and, and turning it from expense into investment. So the rational use of funds that needed that needs to be invested in health into a, a platform for development and innovation. I think that in innovation needs to be seen without any limitations. It's an important model for uh, science and technology so long as they are prepared to develop new products just as to support internal products. In the situation we are dealing with now, I think that the legacy that we have and in closing is that today we would be backed up by society with regards to the use of scientific knowledge for the benefit, especially in the field of health. This is very well consolidated. And I think that the example of the dependence that we had at several moments in dealing with a pandemic, with the uh, personal protection uh, personal protection equipment, PPE, and diagnostic tests, uh, inputs for vaccines. So all this difficulty reinforces a vision of strategic position uh, of a few segments in the country. It's impossible for us to be isolated in a bubble, think, thinking that we must do everything in Brazil, but we need to focus on certain strategic materials uh, that should be produced. In the case of vaccines today, we have more vaccines, but for different reasons, there was major competition. Not all countries have the same number of vaccines uh, that we are having, and uh, neither did us. It's important to emphasize in the first half of the year, we were almost 90% dependent uh, on uh, the vaccines produced by Butantan and the field crews. And uh, strategically, um, it needs to be defined and focusing on inputs that are important for a country that is very big with high populational density and a health system such as ours. I think that this discussion is very important and we started an event such as this and we are going to keep it over the next few months and years, always trying to retain uh, the lessons learned from the pandemic. Thank you very much, Marco. Well, this is being a very nice chat. Felipe, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. And I would like to introduce to you Medtronic. Medtronic, so well known as Pfizer and Field Crews. Our company is focused on technology for healthcare, especially for surgery, intensive care, diabetes, pain control, 
It's a company that has more than 200,000 uh, products and treatments for more than 70 conditions and diseases. It's a global company in Brazil this year. We are uh, celebrating our 50th anniversary. Uh, and one of the products that we offer is a mechanical ventilation that was so necessary during the pandemic. So we had an epicenter of all discussions related to the need of solutions. Agreeing with what Krieger said in terms of PPE, but also products that have saved lives. Uh, and uh, we tried to define the priorities to make the national market well supplied in a situation when we depend from imports. And this is related to the agenda of this conversation. I took the leadership of Medtronic a year ago in Brazil. I have been in a company for 10 years uh, in different positions. And I had the chance of witnessing the evolution of the pandemic uh, and um, ventilators being allocated to hospitals in order to best supply them in spite of all the challenges we had to deal with both in Brazil and in the world. In terms of uh, research and develop, there's some important information. I mean, I'm an engineer and the Ministry of Economy has reallocated approximately 700 million BRL a supplemental credit originally meant for the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation to another six ministries. So this is one piece of information. Other priorities, without saying if the priority of resources, but in fact, 700 million BRL, talking about resources and incentives, it's less 700 million BRL in the Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation. 600 were for funding scholarships, projects of scientific research, and this went down to uh, 650 to 90 million BRL. We Brazilians are very much used uh, because of the circumstances uh, to do the best, to work with very flexibility, to be uh, very involved. But obviously, these restrictions impose significant limitations to our capacity of developing good practices. Krieger also uh, talked about companies that are a part of the Brazilian pride, such as Embrapa, Embraer, Fio Cruz, Butantan. Uh, Brazilians are proud of that. Uh, I think. Uh, that they are part of universal um, healthcare system, the biggest in the planet, by far the biggest healthcare uh, system in the country. But once again, uh, funding in healthcare as a whole imposes severe restrictions to our possibility of providing quality on the front end to the patients and obviously thinking of the chain as a whole, the whole path from the development of technologies, researchers, all the way to the creation and assembly and design of products that will effectively improve medical practices. The reduction uh, of the budget of the Ministry uh, of Innovation Technology uh, and Science was down by 50%. If we, between 14 and 18, it was 11.5 billion BRL, and today is about 2 billion BRL. So, uh, in spite of all the difficulties, we are the 13th in terms of scientific production in the world. Talking about all the areas, we have more than 372 papers published internationally in the past five years, from 15 to 20. So this equivalent to 3% of the scientific production in the globe in the same period, in the past few five years. I think that this reinforces and backs up the issue of the skill of Brazilians. And I, I was talking earlier on about our skill and our potential capacity in the Brazilian territory to have a production which is above average in spite of all difficulties. Another important information, the state of Sao Paulo concentrates 
is the biggest concentration of scientific and technological production. 70% of the expenses in uh, research and development are centered in the state of Sao Paulo. So I also see an opportunity of us disseminating and having a better balance uh, in other states of the federation, universities, uh, uh, to have scientific hubs that can produce a lot to support our long journey. The ministry talked about our lost brains to foreign centers, and uh, this is a constant concern of us. In the academia, there is a very clear pressure in terms of resource distribution, and Brazil is not characterized as a country that historically has a high loss of brains, and this is something said by Renato Giannini Ribeiro. But recently we've been observing more talents being lost to other centers. In my opinion, I think we have a very long journey ahead Medtronic can contribute significantly and as a patriot, I think we can have a more sustainable system in Brazil that encourages technological innovation and development of new practices, the development of the country as a whole. And I also see my optimistic side, which uh, looks forward to having a more promising future. Considering everything that we've learned as a consequence of the pandemic that has hit all of us very heavily. Of course, we are learning many lessons from our experience, priority in health, There has been an increase in healthcare plans, more accessible ones. And there is a clear understanding that the population wants to have healthcare of quality, regardless of being private or public. But we really have to take the best of this moment to leverage this agenda and uh, be able really to um, evolve in our understanding. Having really a an industrial complex where we can actually reach sovereignty, there is a dependence of on external technology there is more in terms of uh, production line. Marta developed her whole career in the pharma industry, so has mine. And manufacturing Brazil is not characterized by production of uh, uh, supplies, but rather by its consumption in medical and the supply area. we can, uh, we just combine supplies. We are more characterized as a uh, industrial line, a setup line. And this is why we depend on uh, raw material and supplies coming from abroad. So it would be wonderful if we could really have it done in-house. Great, thank you, Felipe. I would like to make some comments. We think that Brazil is going to work fine. And now and then we seem uh, to go backward now and then. But I would like to give you an example of what we have. And we can have successful things. One of them, uh, oil and gas, for example. Petrobras has really uh, been all technological uh, things and. Then 
we learned all this uh, progression. And uh, this is almost a successful case. How much university has evolved into that? There are many people who believe that in the university we can develop everything, but that's not true. We can study, we can propose, we can research. But then we need a comp we need a company uh, because universities do not sell anything. In the pharma industry, companies in Brazil do not like to run risk. Just to give you an idea, we run preclinical data, things that were trying to go into phase one, phase two, but we don't see any company willing to invest, even knowing that we have public uh, funds that we have come up with, something from the Ministry of Science and Technology, but it's really difficult to have that kind of experience. There are some other observations because there is here a question by Mauro Pakanovsky, who says, why can't we use different public labs to develop research and development? Would you like to answer that, Minister Temporal? Yes. Well, I don't think that it is the mission of public uh, labs to run research and science. Brazil is an exception in the global context. We have a significant network of public laboratories, mainly Phil Cruz, Butantan, Ezequiel Dias, Tecpar in Paraná, LAFEP in Pernambuco, Institute Vital Brazil in Rio, and they started their mission by manufacturing medications, uh, commodities, so to speak, for public health programs for the previous campaigns of the Ministry of Health for malaria, TB, And they've lost somewhat the sense of its existence. With the PDP policies, we tried to reset the context. In the one side, it made no sense to produce medications which are widely uh, manufactured and sold by different uh, products uh, or uh, industries in the market. But it, it makes sense to act in tech niches, such as neglected diseases or areas that the company believes to be strategic. This is uh, how it has happened in vaccines, for example. For the past decades, Brazil, differently from all other Latin American countries, which closed their public productions of immunobiologicals, Brazil just bet exactly on the opposite. Brazil invested heavily on structuring a technological productive basis. And this has been the base that provided us a, the best situation for COVID-19. So you see, Marcus Krieger and Lydia, Lydia uh, Nizia Trindade were wonderful in working with AstraZeneca through an innovation in public procurement. It was a technological uh, agreement that means that Fiocruz now has mastered an important technology to develop also future vaccines. So this is the role of public uh, labs. I don't think it should be competing with the university or with those that are producing medication to the market. I think it should be part of a strategic understanding of the government. And the best demonstration that it can succeed is the example of Fiocruz for generics to control AIDS. Brazil has been a pioneer in providing medication for AIDS and in vaccines as uh, Fiocruz and Butantan have been shown us. 
I would like to ask a question to Marta. The example of AstraZeneca and Oxford is a successful example. Do you believe that it would be possible? Would it be possible to have a partnership like that between a Brazilian university and Pfizer? I think that the future uh, is in the hands of partnerships as a whole. They are very important for the development of research. And you said that research can never be done alone. One university cannot do it alone and a company alone cannot either. And Pfizer has contributed with many universities throughout the world and also with BioNTech, for example. These are the partnerships that really ensure greater success. So I can see a partnership with Pfizer and university as we have already had in other places of the world. I don't think it's something impossible, quite to the contrary, something really feasible. In partnership with private companies, as we have just done with Europharma, different companies uh, have different strengths and capabilities. This combination of a company such as a Pfizer that has COVID vaccine can produce it. Europharma has a well-respected known a company with high quality. So bringing together these strengths of different companies, either private or public, we can just do the best science. Former minister has mentioned that there is also legislation, we should have respect for innovation and have the appropriate environment that would provide conditions for long-term innovation. Innovation doesn't happen overnight. We've heard that COVID vaccines, they just uh, managed to be produced so quickly because there had been research for a long time. So we should have uh, industries that respect innovation, respect patents. Brazil is a huge country with a very large market with the public health care system, which is the largest in the world, but it should also offer conditions for innovation. There should be no incompatibility. We should have innovation, technology, and also provide access. There is no question from the public, but I do have a question myself. Brazil is a country full of bureaucracy. Public and private organizations tend to have to meet a number of requirements. Uh, we do have good legal framework but uh, uh, concerning science and technology, but we do have another of other difficulties, red tape and uh, some uncertainty and no investments by the government in addition to inconsistency in policies. It, impacts uh, public and private companies likewise. So I would like to hear from you, what do you think would really uh, help us get uh, attract more business here in Brazil? Let me start with Michael Grigger, who does things here in Brazil, but I'm sure he's impacted by all of that. And Felipe, who does think, but in poor things to do things here. Well, we have a number of challenges uh, to do it in Brazil. Our legislation of science and technology is really important. But if we look to the most innovative countries in the world, they do not have any specific legislation because they don't need to. You don't have to. Uh, really have any specific uh, procurement process uh, to buy things. Of course, everything is important, but 
we have to have a clear understanding and a clear understanding and models in the process. We really have to realize there are difficulties and we have um, moved ahead. Minister Temporal mentioned the example of uh, uh, that we had of development of technology. It was a decision based on risk assessment, but at that time, we had to make a decision to invest in products that did not exist, regardless of what product it was. The Brazilian legislation does not allow the preparation of production and manufacturing of a product that does not exist yet. But we carried out a risk analysis of not uh, making the technology investment. How we would be if we hadn't started in March last year to discuss that. Despite all difficulties, it was still very important to rely on this tool and uh, this uh, di uh, this disposition of our uh, law. And it really is uh, showing us that we have excellent legislation, but the only thing is how can we convince everyone uh, in our country, especially now when we have so much uncertainty going on, uh, civil servants, for example, are not uh, sure about uh, really making a purchase of anything innovative. When I am in meetings with managers and innovators, I say, who is in favor of buying uh, 600,000 without having a formal uh, uh, RFI or a bidding process. So all researchers say, yes, we are. The other managers say, no, definitely not. So we really have to make sure that the risks have to be run, provided that we have technical scientific conditions to really support the projects as they deserve to. At Fiocruz, we have been encouraging innovation and we are trying to assess projects on and not how money is being spent, but how can we achieve goals, objectives? Because sometimes there is a good project, very well uh, assessed, but nobody knows whether uh, that uh, study has been published in a, a good uh, peer review uh, journal and if it has produced good results or not. I think we really have to fine tune that. But uh, I, I really have to say that Fiocruz has been selected to be a center of innovation for next generation vaccines, RNA vaccine, RNA based vaccines. And this has all been based on an internal project that we had carried out. Our diagnostic test is also resultant from a project that was funded by our innovation fund. I should have talked about oil and uh, gas, which was, it's probably the best uh, example in science and technology, but I am absolutely sure that this is what we have to do. The problem is uh, during this political economic crisis that we've been experiencing, it's, uh, we really have to do whatever it takes to emerge stronger from the difficulties we've been subject to. When you were speaking about the legislation, maybe Marta won't understand that, but the problem is uh, not uh, really the top uh, 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 management, but it's really sometimes the middle level, you know, it's uh, complex. Felipe, well, my uh, vision is uh, along the same lines as Krieger. I wouldn't like to repeat his ideas, but let me highlight some important issues. I see progress in some specific areas. ANS and visa. Conitec, 
I can see they have faster processes now. They have more transparent processes of analysis. And FISA, our health regulatory agents, some technologies that would take 24 years to be approved, now can be uh, 24 months to be approved, now can be done uh, within less than one year. This is one of the characteristics in Brazil which are necessary to reduce bureaucracy. It should keep up with ethics and transparency and compliance. Really an environment that can bring transparency because investments have to be aligned with certainty that the funds are being invested as they are expected to. I can see some areas where we have been managed to advance significantly. However, in terms of research and development, still have got something to do. We've got our homework, maybe best practices to be replicated in this area. Uncertainties, volatility. In any aspect of public policy, go against the interest of investments. Investments in research, innovation, in manufacturing plants, they are long-term investments. And as such, for multinational companies to make investments, to attract their interest, the long-term policies have to be enforced and stable. And finally, cost Brazil. Tax rate is high compared to other countries. Our competitors to attract research and development and manufacturing. So financial, uh, uh, Barton Krieger was talking about managers who are not willing uh, to make investments at uh, uh, lower levels, but the, each invested dollar has a, an impact on the return on investments. In other words, we still have got a very high cost, uh, very high costs in Brazil. And this is why we always have to make sure before make investments. Well, I think we have come up to the end of our panel, I would like to thank you all very much for your participation. And I hope politicians have uh, heard uh, the messages we've shared with uh, them. It should be the engagement of everyone, pr private companies, public companies, research centers, university. We have to work together. Thank you all very much for your inputs. No further questions were sent to us. And I wish you a great afternoon. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.